Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Drone user successfully challenges Newton, Massachusetts ordinance. Kalamazoo 4-H proposes drone racing program. And AMA provides insight on Singer decision. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The legal system continues to recraft the potential regulatory landscape for UAS in a rush to try to control something they likely don't understand very well. The city of Newton, Massachusetts passed a law last December that banned drone flights below 400 feet over private and public property without the consent of the landowner and required local registration. Now, though that law has been overturned by a federal judge in Massachusetts, thanks to the efforts of a physician and inventor living in Newton, Dr. Michael Singer, who is also an FAA certified drone pilot. Singer challenged four sections of the local ordinance representing himself. He said that the city's ordinance was moot because, quote, it attempts to regulate an almost exclusively federal area of law. Federal District Judge William G. Young agreed with Singer. Young wrote, quote, Congress has given the FAA the responsibility of regulating the use of airspace for aircraft navigation and to protect individuals and property on the ground and has specifically directed the FAA to integrate drones into the national airspace. The decision is not likely to have any specific impact on any law other than Newton's, though a number of municipalities have been waiting for the outcome of this case before making their own regulatory decisions. Kalamazoo County, Michigan, 4-H officials met recently to consider establishing an FPV drone racing program that it hopes will spur interest in the aircraft, which are increasingly being used as a tool in agriculture. 4-H program coordinator Anthony Frontera said that the program is designed to mix fun with STEM principles in an effort to capture the attention of kids who are already interested in math and science. The program, quote, could possibly be an opportunity to get them to engage and explore more opportunities in the STEM field, he said. Farmers are increasing their use of drones for monitoring crops, with several companies developing software specifically for that function. More than 100,000 jobs associated with UAVs are expected by 2025. In the next Drone Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Although some of the details don't add up so well, there does appear to be a documented incident between at least one Army Black Hawk flying in formation with several others and a small drone, while through an area reportedly controlled by a TFR and a reported altitude of 500 feet. Parts of the drone were recovered from the fuselage of the Hilo. We'll follow up when we have more verifiable data. One of ANN's own UAS test pilots and drone journalist Casey Seelock recently found himself in a unique locale in which to let his tiny whoop out for some air. Check out his YouTube site, Eat Sleep Drone Repeat, and an amazing bit of flying through a terrific locale. Tiny Whoop goes to Playas, New Mexico. Tell me it doesn't look like Casey was having way too much fun. Be sure to like his site when you visit. FAA reauthorization, which has become something of a political football this year because of a misguided attempt to privatize ATC, failed to receive a successful temporary extension because a fast-track attempt to give the FAA six months worth of extended funding which had a lot of non-aviation baggage attached to it, went nowhere due to infighting between each side of the house. A leaner, but still temporary measure is expected to come up for a vote by this weekend. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. This is what might happen when your drone grows up. Dubai is edging closer to its goal of launching a pioneering hover taxi service, with authorities announcing a successful concept flight made last week without passengers. The main concept flight of the autonomous air taxi involves a vehicle that will be used for the world's first self-flying taxi service set to be introduced by Dubai's Road and Transport Authority. 
The two-seater AAT, capable of transporting people without human intervention or a pilot, has been supplied by Volocopter, a Germany-based specialist manufacturer of autonomous air vehicles. Powered by electricity and featuring low noise levels, the AAT is an environmentally friendly vehicle. Its current prototype version has a maximum flight time of approximately 30 minutes at a cruise speed of 31 miles per hour and a maximum airspeed of just over 60 miles per hour. The AAT measures about 2 meters in height and the diameter of the rotor trim, including propellers, is just over 7 meters. Over the next five years, the RTA will collaborate with the UAE General Civil Aviation Authority and the Dubai Civil Aviation Authority to ensure that the operational requirements for implementing AAT services are put in place. Following the Singer decision, AMA boss Rich Hansen issued the following statement, quote, AMA is pleased that the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts has ruled in favor of Dr. Michael Singer in his lawsuit against the city of Newton, Massachusetts concerning the regulation of unmanned aircraft systems. The court's ruling affirms the role of the federal government in overseeing our nation's airspace. We congratulate Dr. Singer on his victory. Any state or local regulations of UAS operations or airspace should wait until the Federal Aviation Administration's Drone Advisory Committee has reached consensus recommendations on the proper role of state and local governments in these types of issues. AMA is currently working with this committee, which includes the FAA, state and local governing bodies, and other industry stakeholders on recommendations for safely incorporating UAS into our nation's airspace. State and local governments across the country can rely on existing technology, neutral statutes, and tort laws within their jurisdiction to protect people and property on the ground. Consultation with the FAA is encouraged, and as always, AMA is also happy to offer guidance. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.